we're actually on page I in test of the scan, page 79. For those who are using paragraph systems, it's paragraph PES, paragraph 88. But before we go to page I and test, we have to remind ourselves of what we're in the middle of. The Ramchal explained to us that, quote unquote, the source material for the guf is Astoris Panam. The source material for the Neshama is Ha'oris Panam. And the analogy is completely true if you work through the guf neshama, how the guf and neshama interact. That's absolutely the same analogy about how hastaris panim interacts with hastaris panim. So we start with a simple concept. We know that the neshama goes into the guf, and that's what gives the eyeballs the ability to see, the ears the ability to hear, the mouth the ability to move its lips and to taste, etc. Because Layalena, once the neshama comes out of the body, the eyeballs are still there, and the ears are still there, and the lips are still there, but they can't move. So, contrary to what we usually think about, the neshama is some completely spiritual thing, and the guf is some kind of completely physical thing. In fact, the neshama goes into the guf and gives every limb of the guf and every part of the guf. It's the life giving, it's the engine of the guf. It's not just a spiritual thing, it is the life giving source to the eyeballs, the ears, etc. By the same token, the ha'oras panim, so we use the word percolate, the neshama is percolating into every, uh, percolates in every single part of the physical body. And when we see la'aleinu ha'storas panim outside, chaos, God's hidden, he's not taking care of the world, he's not supervising the world, percolating in there, although you can't see it like you can't see the neshama, percolating inside the ha'storas panim is a ha'oras panim, and every single event is driving the world towards the Geula Shalema, the Tikkun Hashalim. The same way Neshama is driving the Guf to perfect it, the Ha'oras Panim in the Hastaras Panim is driving each world event to its ultimate Tikkun Hashalim. That's the analogy. We got a rule at the top of page Ayin Ches that the tiniest amount of Guf is darkness to the neshama. The neshama can't fully give off its light and convert the guf into what it should be. We know that in Olam Hazet, that's impossible, except for those rare exceptions. But it's virtually impossible. It's more than virtually impossible. It is impossible, except for the few exceptions, for the neshama to convert the guf into what the guf really should be. And that's because the guf has in it the infection of Eitz Hadas Tobera. And therefore the guf has to go back into the ground, decompose, get rid of the infection. At Chiyas HaMesim, a new body comes up that doesn't have the infection in it. The neshama comes from Gan Eden, the Olam HaNeshamas goes back into this rejuvenated body that doesn't have the infection in it. And boom, now all of a sudden the guf can be lit up in a way it couldn't be lit up before, but it's still not lit up completely the way it can be. That takes a process, and the Ramchal told us that it's a five-step process. Basically, he said there are three steps, but the three steps are broken down into five, five stages. And that's what he's going to talk about today. Now, we read Rafid Landers' footnote at the bottom of page Ein Ches, footnote 21 in the brackets. When we use the word Shlita here, um, rulership, sovereignty, being the boss. And we talk about who's the boss, the guf or the neshama. For purposes of this discussion that's happening in this chapter of Ramchal, we're not talking about Taivas and Yetzirah. We're not talking about that at all. In the general conversation, we say the guf is taking over the neshama and it's directing the neshama, it's become the boss, and people are following the Yetz Ahura, and they're falling prey to the infection of Yetz Hadas Tovarah, blah, 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 blah. That's in that general conversation of who's the boss, the Guf and the Neshama. We're not talking about that here. We're talking about the Guf post Yetz Hadas Tovarah. We spoke about this last week. Tchiyas um, HaMesim will happen before the year 6,000. So yes, in this world, 
we have the first level or the lowest level interaction between Guf and Neshama. That lowest level interaction is the one we just spoke about. The Guf is fighting the Neshama, the Neshama is fighting the Guf, the Neshama is trying to control the Guf, the Guf wants to do things, the Guf doesn't want to do things, and the Neshama is trying to take control of the Guf and elevate it. That's the lowest level interaction of Guf Neshama, and that's all interaction before Tchiyas HaMesim, which has to occur by the year six steps. Once Tchiyas HaMesim occurs, there's four new levels of the Neshama working on the Guf to bring it to its ultimate height of complete perfection, which is called level five, the highest level on the totem pole. When we talk about rulership, we're not talking on the, the last four levels. Again, before Tchiyas HaMesim, we're talking about who's the boss. Is the Guf telling the Neshama what to do, or is Neshama telling the Guf what to do? And there's this, I should do the Abeim, I shouldn't do the Abeim, I should do the Mitzvah, I shouldn't do the Mitzvah. That's Guf and Neshama at its lowest level, we'll call number one, before Tchiyas HaMesim. At Tchiyas HaMesim, that battle's not going on. The Yitzhahar has already been shechted, Mashiach came. There's no Eitz Adas Tovara. It's been let out into the ground through decomposition and you're already at Chiyas So none of this is around. Post Chiyas HaMesim, there are the four next levels where there's still Guf. There's still Guf. And then the Shoma needs to finish its work on this Guf that came back for Chiyas HaMesim until you get to level five. And at that point, the Guf has been completely transformed by the Neshama. So of these five stages, one stage is before Tchiyas HaMesim. That's the lowest stage. That's the world that we live in of conflict between Guf and Neshama. At Tchiyas HaMesim, that conflict ends. There's no Eitzadas Tovara and there is no Yitzhahara. But there's now a Guf, a new one, but it's still Guf. And now we have four stages. We go higher and higher and higher. At number five, the Guf's been completely transformed. Okay, the Ramchal explained to us last week that we're going to start with level five, the highest level, complete perfection, and then work our way backwards. But that's what we think it's backwards. It's actually the chronological order. Because when you want to study the interaction between Guf and Neshama, we want to study Adam Harishon. And Adam Harishon started at basically level five. And then never because of Averis, his goof became more and more and more and more and more goof until we are in the world that we live in. He went down, and now we're trying to climb back up the totem pole to get to five. So the world started other Mauritian at five, and then because of the chet of the Eitzadash Tovara and successive Averis, the world went down to the world we're in now with Neshama and the goof are fighting. And we need to climb back up in order to get to level five. But the first thing we're gonna discuss is level five. So that's where we're up to on page I in test. <clears throat> Friedlander is heading, Chomesh Madregas Biyaka Shebein HaNesham Lagov. The five Madregas, the five rungs, the five levels that exist between the Nesham and the Guf. And we're getting an in-depth view of the interactions of the Guf and the Nesham because ultimately we're gonna move on by analogy and say, now I can understand on a human level how God runs the world. Because if I can understand the five levels of Guf and Neshama, and Guf is Hastar Esponim, and Neshama is Ha'ar Esponim, and I understand the five levels of how they interact, I can now start talking about how the Hastar Esponim is interacting inside the Ha'ar Esponim. And just like in Guf and Neshama, what's the highest level? where the guf has become perfected by the neshama. When I talk about the world, not the human being, I talk about level five of the world, that's where there's no more hastar esponim, it's pure ha'ar esponim, where the physicality of the world has given way to the spirituality of the world. I don't like those words, but those are the best words I can think of right now. So we're gonna do an analogy. Level five is where the guf, which is hastar esponim, has become transformed into something completely holy by the neshama that all along was percolating inside the guf. The same thing, level five of the whole world, is the ha'aras panam will finally break through the hastaras panam 
and there'll be a perfected world just as on the other level there was a perfected human being. So the five stages we're studying here about Guf and Neshama will ultimately be the five stages of the history of the world. Okay. So Rafid Lander says at the top of page I and Tess, Aleph, stage number one, Ein shum shlita le guf. The guf has no shlita. This doesn't mean the guf is not the the guf is not telling the, the neshama to do aveus. Remember, level five, four, three, two. There's no yitzahora. There's no yitzadas tovera. When we talk about shlita, we're talking about the existence of a guf, and the existence of a guf is dense and dark. And therefore, the neshama still can't completely perfect the guf. It's got to still shine through. And that's what happens at levels two, three, four, and five. At level five, it's completely transformed the guf. Madrega Aleph, level one. Halahi shi'ir le guf metzias. There is a guf that is existent. And that's the Ramchal Shita. Uh, what is Tchias HaMesa? Yes, Hamesim can't be that the Neshama comes back. Neshama never went anywhere. Neshama doesn't die. It went to the oil of Hanashamas. So when we talk about Chiyas Hamesim, it's a guf. And the Ramchal pointed out also to us in the Sefer, Ein HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mekapeh Aschak the Gemara says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu makes sure that anything that did anything good gets rewarded for it. The guf was used for wonderful things. It ate matzah, put on tefillin, tares, amish, bachet, learn Torah. The guf was used for unbelievable things. We don't trash the guf. We take care of the guf. And therefore, at Chiyas HaMesim, the guf has to come back to it. So the guf is going to be there. But what will it be at this highest level five? Achlo shlita klavita. There is no shlita whatsoever. Meaning that the physical presence of guf not Yetzirah. Remember, Yetzirah is finished at level two. We're here already at level five. We're talking about that there's no more goof, goof in terms of the dense darkness of goof. There's nothing left to inhibit or to um, give any problems to the neshama completely shining through. It's a level where there won't even be a hint of any physicality the way it is right now in our world. And therefore, in this situation, level five, there will not be a single iota of physicality, the kind of which we know today, there'll be nothing of such a thing at level five. This is the most complete matzav of all the possibilities that a human being can ever reach, level five, um, which is level four after Trias HaMesim. Level one is before Trias HaMesim, four levels after Trias HaMesim, this fourth level after Trias HaMesim, which we call level five, the goof has been completely perfected. How has it been perfected? It no longer is dark and dense, and the neshama has taken over in such a way that there's no physicality left to it. And as the Ramchal wrote, explained to us last week, you don't even have a name to call it anymore. On page Ayin Zion, the Ramchal said, Ad afilo ola This thing doesn't even have a name anymore. We used to call it goof, but what are we going to call it now? We called it goof because it was dense and dark. It was flesh and blood. It gave us all kinds of tithes. At level five, this thing came back. It was resurrected. It had a trias amaze in this thing. But what do you want me to call it? Flesh and blood, goof. It, it is there, but it's, it is, it's almost not even the same name. You can't give it the same name. Okay, that's level five. Bayes, the Ramchal says. Shlita Kaloshi Shalaguf, level four, which is below obviously level five, means that there is some Shlita to the Guf. Again, we're talking about post Eitzhadas Tovara, we're talking about there's no Yetzahara, but at this level four, this Guf that came back at Trias HaMesim still has some Guf to it, it still has some darkness and density to it, and the Neshama still needs to work on it. This little darkness and density that's still there in this resurrected body still needs to be worked on by the neshama because the neshama can't completely shine through even 
this tiny iota of darkness. If you go back to the top of page Ayin Fest that we read last week, the Ramchal said, The slightest amount of guf, the slightest amount of is going to become a barrier to the full light of the neshama shining through. Whatever slight 1% guf is 1% dense darkness, and through that 1% dense darkness, the light already can't shine through fully. So at level four, we do have this resurrected body that still has some guf to it. So Ramchal explains, Madrega Beish, Yelo Guf Shlita Kolshun. A tiny little amount of guf is still there, and at this stage, so to speak, a person would have this resurrected person would still have a clear memory of some kind of what a body is. And he's going to give a marshal. The person, this resurrected person, will not remember all the details all the, the desire to do this and the desire to do that and the eights hard to do this, all the nitty gritty of what the human being was <clears throat> before Kriyas HaMesim. <clears throat> all those details that went through the brain of a goof, the goof brain, all those details are not there any longer. Elezeha kloli midvorim rabim shoyibam. The person, this resurrected person will have some kind of memory of the goof yeah, the goof had some kind of desires. It, it had something that the neshama was trying to work on, a general kind of memory. And that what, what is causing this memory to this resurrected person? The fact that the goof is still there in some form and is causing a density and a darkness. That density and darkness is now a memory. Where did this density and darkness come from? Oh, the neshama was always trying to harness this thing. Marshal, the, the Ramchal says, I'll give you a marshal. Let me show over a lot of rabbis. The Omov Yageh become a harpatki, harpatki are events. Well, Elaine, a person went through many tsaris, one after another in his life, so many events. And Baruch Shemi got through them. The Acha Nish Ad Shus Boy, the Ephus Baklao. He Baruch Hashem got through all these things, but he's extremely exhausted and extremely tired. In this stage, that's what we're talking about. The neshama went through a lengthy process to transform the guf while the neshama was in the guf. The neshama got very tired, and that's why it went to Olam HaNeshama after 120 years to rejuvenate, and the body went into the ground. Built in Mufchan Mahu Baprat, El Ke'ish Asher Eze Yogin Bovavoy, this person that's very tired, there's so much that he went through. Basically, the bottom line is, he just says, I'm so exhausted after everything I went through. He has that general feeling of exhaustion. Or a person who something is bothering him, and he can't be completely happy, and he himself can't tell you what's really bothering him. There's something there inside. He can't even describe to you what it is, but there's something that's holding him back from being absolutely happy. These kind of mashalim are the marshal of the guf neshama at level four. The guf is still doing something there, and it's still giving off some darkness and density that the neshama can't shine through. And this resurrected person has some memory of this. He's not exactly sure what's causing it and why it's happening, but he knows it's happening. This, will, this is true at level four. But then the shama itself will not have the full power to spread itself and complete the work on the guf, level, level four. The Neshama will feel a little heavy, so to speak. There's still something that's holding back the light. But the specifics of the guf, what is the guf? What was it when I was in my first life? Those pratim are not part of level four. It's just this general thing. Something's bothering me and I don't know what it is. And for the Neshama is this thing, guf, 
it's interfering with me. I'm not exactly sure why or what it is, but I know it's interfering with me. That's level four. You move up to level five, then the Shem is taking care of that also. Gimel, we're going down. Level three, and this is still after Trias HaMesim. Shlita HaGuf Bekama Pratim Kali. The body, the guf, is actually giving off to this resurrected person. And the neshama, it's giving off some details of what it is. It's actually interfering more with the neshama. Madrega Gimel. Beyoyz HaGuf Shailet Beprat. When the guf get, can, is now there in details, not just the general thing, oh, this guf, something's bothering me, I don't know what it is. You start remembering details. Achloi B'chol Pratav. Not all the details. El mixes prata. Shiyim to other but at me is a draw mid divre a guf. Drum ha yoisa kam achal pon and gufnim. During this level three, there'll be things that will still be guf. The Ramchal doesn't explain exactly what these things are. Like the lowest level kind of physicality, the varum kalim. But nevertheless, there are now details at level three that are still physical details. And now the neshama is really dealing with some physical details and has to work on those. At level four, the physical details are gone. And now it's just this general, something's bothering me and I'm not sure what it is exactly. And then you get to level five. That's level three. Nevertheless, it's simple and you should know that in these levels, certainly five, four and three, there's not big ramifications to the goof. The goof is not making you look at what you shouldn't look at. The goof is not making you think about things you shouldn't think about. There's no yates or horror. There's no yates or dust over uh, that uh, Ramchal just pointing out. Rav Friedlander told us in footnote 21 on page I and S. We're talking about here the physical existence giving off a barrier to the Nisham. We're not talking about Tivus and Yates or Dalit, level four. Which is the lowest level post Chiyas Hamesim? Five, four, five, perfect, as as perfect as human being can get. Five, four, at four, that's all the guf is is some kind of general uh, density problem. At three, it becomes more particularized, and now we go down to level four. Level four, which is the first level after Trias Hamesim. The guf is there basically, this new guf is there and is dense and dark. A person post Trias Hamesim will find all of his physicality present the eyes, the ears, the nose, and all the issues, not Yetzahara, not Eitzadas Tovara. Avol kemo sheha neshama atahi ba'olam hazeki ger ba'oretz. The same way the neshama in olam hazeh, meaning level uh, number five, before Tchies HaMesim, we call the neshama, the Maral talks about this in several places, the neshama is living the life of a guest. It doesn't want to be here. It doesn't belong here. It's in a hotel. It's in a heichal. Loshin of the Kabbalah. The Shama is in a heichal. And the heichal is the guf. It's a visitor. It doesn't want to be here. At this level, level four, the first level after Trias HaMesim, the guf is now in a place where it is the guest. Whereas in Olam Hazer, before Trias HaMesim, the Neshama was a guest, it wasn't in its real place, and it felt uncomfortable about it. When you go post Trias HaMesim, level one post Trias HaMesim, which we call level four, there the guf feels out of place. It's already after Trias HaMesim. There's no Eitz Adas, Tovarai, Eitz Zahara. And although there's a physicality, this physicality, doesn't feel it's in place. It doesn't really belong yet because the Shoma hasn't finished its work and it really doesn't belong in this kind of holy world. 
אבל כמו שהנשמה עד היא בואי למעשה גבר, זה סיים ווי דה נשמה אין דיס וורלד, איז לייק אסטרנג'ר, איז אביזיטר, והיא צריכה ללכת בדרכי הגוף, and the neshama needs to follow the guf. If it wants to walk somewhere, the neshama needs to use the feet. If it wants to put on tefillin, it needs the hands. So the neshama needs to use the body. That's how it works in this world before Tchiyas HaMezim. Kach haguf yiyeh hu kegeh ba'aretz, va neshama hi shaledes. After Tchiyas HaMezim, while there is this real physicality, but that physical body is now the guest and the visitor and the stranger, And the neshama is really the one that's running the show. Hanashama hi shaletes. V'yitzterech haguf oleches bedrochel. And the body will have to follow now the neshama. Ke'inyan, like the marshal that Chazal tell us, azla bekarta halach benimusa. When you go to a city, you follow the rules of the city. So this is, for example, the example, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, when he went up to heaven, the Ramchal is going to talk about it. He went up to heaven and he didn't eat for 40 days and 40 nights. What does that mean? How does he not eat for 40 days and 40 nights? The Ramchal will explain in a moment. But the point is, Listen, Moshe Rabbeinu, while you're on planet Earth, you're with humans, you can eat. When you come upstairs with the Malach and the Minik here is, we don't eat, and therefore you don't eat. And the Ramchal says, Moshe Rabbeinu, all of us show when Moshe Rabbeinu went up to Shemayim to be Makabal Torah, he didn't take off his guf. His guf went up to Shemayim. But because his body became a guest, bodies don't belong upstairs in Shemayim, his body was given a guest pass, and it went up to Shemayim. And what's the rule of a guest? When you're a guest, you follow the rules of the Balabayas. If the Balabayas is Minigas, he stands at Kiddush Friday night, and your Minigas, you sit during Kiddush, you stand during Kiddush, because that's the Minigas of the Balabayas. So when Moshe Rabbeinu went up to Shemayim, his guf got a, a reach card, a guest card. And now if you're a guest in Shemayim, you do as they do in Shemayim. And therefore he didn't eat. Therefore, his guf for those 40 days and 40 nights, and later became uh, altogether 120 days and 120 nights. During that time, his guf, because of the rule of also the kart, the halach mini musa, the guf actually became like a neshama. Neshamas don't eat, and Moshe Rabbeinu's guf got a guest card. You're now up in Shammai, and you do as we do up here. And therefore, not that his goof didn't go up there, his goof did need the physical eating. And as Rashi explains in Bob Metzia, if you're in a specific country, you follow the minagam of the country, whatever that uh, the, the context in which it's said. We're using it in this context, going up to Shema. So what do you have here? What's the Marshall Nimshal? Post Chiyas HaMesim, there's no Yetzirah. There's no Yetzirah Tovara. It's a brand new resurrected body. Who's really the Balabayas now? The Guf understands that the Neshama is the Balabayas, and the Guf wants the Neshama to go through level four to level three to level two to get to level one so that the Guf itself can come to its perfection. So the Guf now is the guest. The same way when Moshe went to a place that wasn't really meant for him at this point, he went to Shemayim, he got this guest card. And that allowed his guf to exist in Shemayim without eating or drinking as if the guf was in the Shema. The same thing is true at level four, the first level after Tchiyas HaMesim. The guf now is a guest because it's in a place it doesn't really belong. This is the the place of Shleimus, right? Tchiyas HaMesim, we're getting ready to go to Olam Haba. And the Guf still needs to be transformed into Neshama. So it gets this guest card, and therefore the Guf no longer is that physical Guf where it has to eat and has to drink, but it's still Guf. And because it's Guf, the Neshama is still working on it at level four, three, two, 
until one are perfected. Venimza, you therefore shehishtanu say boys as man ain't a nimshak machmas atzme la machmas makoina, the ain't a shimu gomu. Like my Moshe Rabbeinu, when he went up to Shemaim and it ended up being 120 days and 120 nights, it didn't change his essence. When he came back down to planet Earth, he had to eat. What happened was for the 120 days he was up there because of the place he was in, it changed what he needed and he got the guest card. But he didn't change in essence. As soon as he came back to Earth, he needed to eat. The same thing is true of this goof at level four. It's resurrected. It's really now in a place where it doesn't belong, but it gets this card so that it can remain there for level four, three, two, and level one. It's completely perfected. And now the goof and the neshama both are at home with each other. Even at this low level, level four, the first level of the Tchias HaMesim, there are no ramifications, toldos, there are no physical ramifications. People are not doing Averis, there are no Yetzirah, it's Das Tovara. The Guf is not giving ramifications that it does in this world before Tchias HaMesim. It's just a physical thing that the Neshama still needs to work on. At this level four, all the nyone guf are there, the whole physical guf, the eyeballs see through the eyeballs, the ears see through the ears, etc. at this level four. But the, the guf recognizes it's not balabas anymore. It's now in a place where it's a guest. And now there's a balabayas called in the Sham. However, once you move up from level four, which is level one after Tres Amaze, and once you go to three, two, and one, there even these in these uh, many details of Guf, I see through the eyes, I hear through the ears, those slowly become more spiritual until the perfection of five. Those are the four levels post Tchias HaMesim, four, three, two, one. One is the ultimate perfection of the Guf, where the Guf no longer provides any darkness or density to Neshama. Neshama completely shines through beautifully, and that's like level five of the perfect world where the Ha'oras Panam completely shines through and there's no Hastara Spanim, which the Ramchal will explain later in the Sefer as he completes the analogy. So we've done four out of the five Madregos. We've done five ultimate perfection, four where there's Guf, but it's only in some kind of general memory bank. Level three, where it's more detailed. Level um, two, where there's actual Gufnius there. Again, whatever these things mean, in terms of, we don't know what these things mean because no one's ever seen what post Chiyas mean. For us, it just means that post Chiyas the process of transforming Guf into something that is more perfect is something that occurs after Chiyas HaMesim. It's not that Chiyas HaMesim, boom, everyone's perfect. Chiyas HaMesim begins the process of level two, three, four, five, as the neshama takes more and more out of the guf and transforms it into something greater. And at level five, the neshama completes its work on the guf and it's the tikkun hasholim. What we haven't studied yet is the lowest level, level one, which is before Tchiyas HaMesim, our world, where the guf is the boss and the neshama is trying to harness the guf to stop doing what it shouldn't do and to start doing what it should do. That's the subject for the next paragraph in the Ramchal, which will take care, which we will take care, take a look at in Yetzirah tomorrow. That's called level uh, five in the chronological order, and now we're going to be talking about this world. All Yidden need Yeshua should have Yeshua. All Yidden need Rafur should have Rafur. All Yidden need Nachamah should have Nachamah. All Yidden need Shabrach and Adi Brach should have all the brachas of the 
the wonderful things that the Rabbi Hashem gives out in this world so that everybody can be an Ayman Hashem, the Simcha Rabba, the Simcha Atzuma. All Yeshua's Nechamas, Rafus, and Brachas only come through the Rabbi Hashem. It's the only way they can happen because he's the Echad, Yachad, and Yuchad. When we understand this and internalize this, we're doing a Gila Yichud in our own lives. There's more and more people do this Gila Yichud and internalize this idea. We bring about the Gila Yichud for which Mashiach can come and finish that Gila Yichud Meher Vimeinu Mamish today. Before Shalema, Moshe Rezel, Moshe Zeh, Eliq Ben Rezel, before Shalema, Sar Shachal Yisrael, is a Yid in our community. Is going to have surgery today at 6 p.m. There is a Tehillim list that was sent out. People are saying Tehillim at 6 p.m. Moshe Zelig Ben Rezel at 6 p.m. If you can say Tehillim for that name, Moshe Zelig Ben Rezel, will be a tremendous chesed. Everybody, please take care of yourselves. Do what you can do. Do what you shouldn't do. Don't do what you shouldn't do. Take into consideration your seichel. You know who you are. You know what the level of your your physical health is. You understand these things. Use a seichel yasha to do what you should do, not to do what you shouldn't do. Listen to the whole oath. Even be machna on the whole oath because a lot of the whole oath are part of political compromises. The person has to have a seichel yasha to keep himself healthy and well and happy. To be Makabu Nation, Mashiach, Game Everyman, Everybody have a wonderful day. I deserve.